I was originally hired in 1994 to reintroduce wolves. That transitioned into kind of a research and management position. But basically, it's been following the wolves in Yellowstone for the last 25 years. So I was asked to be an advisor for the Isle Royal wolf reintroduction. Um, having done it here 25 years ago and having worked on Isle Royal uh, for 15 years myself, it gave me familiarity not only with the island, the situation, but it also gave me familiarity with the techniques and practices of reintroducing wolves, the handling, uh, the capture, um, how things would go afterwards. So I was an advisor to the program um, prior to the reintroduction. So our Royal, and to a degree Yellowstone, have been good examples of what can happen to an ecosystem when you don't have top-level predators. The most prominent in North America, of course, is the wolf. And wolves were eradicated in Yellowstone in 1926. So most of the 20th century, we saw what happens when there are no predators. Now, cougars were eliminated too, bear numbers were reduced, and the elk population burgeoned. It grew, grew to very high levels, and it had strong impacts on the grasslands and the woody vegetation. And those had spin-off effects. Some ecologists call those knockoff effects. But that reverberated through the system because top-level carnivores were either eliminated or reduced. And that's the same thing that was happening on Isle Royale. And so it's been an example to a lot of ecologists on how nature works. And Isle Royale really has displayed the fundamentals of ecology better than any other system. And those fundamentals are, is nature structured by bottom-up forces or top-down? You know, predators influencing moose, influencing vegetation, or nutrient and sunlight going into vegetation, determining the number of moose, determining the number of wolves. And that's been a yin-yang, and, and it's been hard to study. And Isle Royal has led the way with that. And we've learned it's, it's kind of a little bit of both. We're, we're trying to replicate that here in Yellowstone. But Isle Royal has also shown what's happened when those two forces get out of balance, when one becomes more powerful than the other, and then how the reverberations from the system occur. And that's exactly what's happening now, and that's exactly the rationale behind bringing wolves back. I, I think the similarities between Yellowstone and Isle Royale are uh, the wolf reductions were both human caused. The issue is here in Yellowstone, it was much more evident that people did it. We killed them off. On Isle Royale, it's more subtle. There was a human introduced disease parvovirus in the early 80s. Some people debate that, but the evidence favors that that did occur. That was human caused. And then climate change has caused the ice bridge to the island to form less frequently, which is cutting off that genetic rescue that would have happened naturally. And so the similarities are people did it. The things that are different is Iowa Oil is an island. Yellowstone is part of this North American land mass, yet wolves weren't close. They were close to Isle Royale. If there was just ice enough, they probably would have gotten out of there and this reintroduction would not have been necessary. Yellowstone, there weren't any wolves nearby. We had to leapfrog to Canada, get them, and bring them back. And so that was probably the biggest difference. And then secondly, system complexity. Yellowstone food web is a tangled mess. Isle Royale, much more clear, much more simple, much more linear. 50 years ago, those ice bridges were more typical. Roughly eight out of every 10 years had an ice bridge. And we know now that those ice bridges were important because when an ice bridge forms, like this last winter, wolves use it. A wolf left the island that was put out there last fall. So that ice bridge is something that they'll use quite readily. And when the odds are eight out of 10 years, there's an ice bridge, it's almost like part of the mainland. We took that away. Now the ice bridge is one or two out of every 10 years because of climate change, which is human cause. So that's the issue. So the fingerprints of humans are all over this wolf reduction. So in a way, I don't understand what the debate is about, well, we need to let nature take its course. We interfered with that course in a huge way. 
So what do we do? Just let it go now that we've launched it, now that we've changed it? We know what nature used to be like through our science, or we have a pretty good idea. So the question is, do we help, or we just walk away and say, philosophically, we need to let nature be, wilderness be. Well, what does that look like nowadays? Climate change is this hurricane, and we've got a candle up, and we're trying to keep that candle burning. But this is an easy candle to keep going, because this isn't gonna cost much, and it's a little intervention that's just gonna keep this system going in a much more stable, natural fashion. But it's a small tweak for a small cost that's gonna make nature stay more whole. Maybe some would say, that's our response to climate change, and that's precedent setting. But I don't think that's yet to be determined because to a degree, we're trying to do that here as well. But the Park Service policy is, if humans did it, we're gonna intervene. I mean, nature's on the run, and, and we did that. Wolves are on the run. And so it, it's kind of kind of dwindling down to, where can we have them now? Where's a good place for wolves? Where's a good place for nature? Where's a good place for functioning ecosystems? And so it's just to sit back and say, I'm gonna take hands off and I'm gonna let nature take its course. We don't have that luxury anymore. Yellowstone is one of the best places in the continental United States for wolves. So is our Royal. It's an island. Wolves cause conflicts. Wolves cause controversy. Nature is declining. Where can we save it? You gotta go to the places that it's savable. Yellowstone's one, Isle Royale's another. The other thing I've learned is the value of a fully functioning ecosystem. We've seen the ecosystem change and become restored here in Yellowstone. We're seeing it fall apart on Isle Royale. I think the biggest threats to wilderness areas and parks is keeping them functioning quasi-naturally in the face of the human takeover of the planet of Earth, especially climate change. I mean, I'm an idealist. I grew up thinking that pristine nature was out there somewhere. It's not anymore. Climate change is the hand that sits over everything. And so we've been incredibly successful in the 20th century learning about how natural systems function. We're gonna to have to use that knowledge to help them as they get rearranged by climate change. And Iowa Royal is the best example. By having, helping wolves be out there, the ecological balance is more likely to persist than instead of it becoming a boom-bust cycle dominated by moose population increases, vegetation overuse, and then a population crash. That's walking away midstream. And I think that's some of the most important things we've learned uh, and, and need to be wary of in the future. Wildlife biologists to combat climate change, I'm not sure how you do it. It's a, a worldwide problem uh, facing every country in the world. So what can we do? We, we have to look for tweaks. We have to look for things that are within our control to either, either adapt or assist. Should we be planting white bark pine because they're on their way out in places like Yellowstone and Glacier? Should we help restore them to keep the system going? Uh, wolves and Al Royal are another example. We need to be looking for little things that have big effects that don't cost a lot. The only way we're gonna get at that is by understanding systems through science. I hate to see the hubris of humanity do away with something like wolves just because they're inconvenient for us. And just because we think the world is here for us no, it's here for all of nature. And that's unraveling. And I want to be a part of, at least in a small way, saying, no, they have a place. We have a place. Let's try and preserve that. And let's also try and preserve nature apart from humans. That's a big part of wilderness and national parks. It's just not as pure as it once was. And so we're part of that. I want to help save it. That's why I'm passionate.